Chimeras are generally mythical creatures that are a blend of a lion, a goat, and a dragon. But they've also been depicted in pop culture in a bunch of different ways. Sometimes they're really cool or really menacing and gnarly looking, and sometimes they seem like they've been made specifically to traumatize anime fans. But a while back, a subscriber and friend of the channel, New Jork Art, who makes a lot of really cool art himself, and I'll link his Instagram and YouTube channel if you want to go check that out, suggested that I try making Pokemon Chimeras or Ben 10 Chimeras or a bunch of different Chimera ideas, but the Pokemon one really stuck with me. So today I'm going to make some new original Chimeras using a bunch of different Pokemon and present the lore for these creatures through banter between an unexpected pairing of Bustar Terminax and someone you'll figure out soon enough. By the way, I just used the search function in my YouTube backend to see if anyone else had suggested the term Chimeras and saw that Professional Ranter has also been suggesting that I do Chimeras. And I appreciate that suggestion, but this is also a good opportunity to point out to lots of people that if you post big lists of suggestions, most of the time I'm not reading that full list of suggestions because I'm trying to get to as many people as possible when I'm going through the comment sections. So every idea under the first one or two suggestions might as well not exist. This being a good example, I didn't know Professional Ranter had been suggesting I do something with Chimeras until I searched that term in my comment sections. Still an awesome idea though, Professional Ranter, Chimeras are super cool. Let's hit like if you want, subscribe if you feel like, but either way, enjoy the show. Bustar Terminax Travel Log. I've returned to Dimension D107, a realm that runs much more on magic than on tech like my universe, where I helped a group who call themselves the Secret Knights, buddies of mine now, to thump this weird techno-demon lady who wasn't from around here. Done some more helping of the knights and taken some tips from them on cool places to visit in this world. Main reason I came here in the first place was to check out some of the epic critters they got running around. And the knights knew where to find a whole bunch of them. They told me about this place called the Chimera Isle. Got the name because the place is full of breeds of super unique chimeras, blended from all kinds of different monsters from around this world. Folks who discovered it got no idea where these creatures came from. There was some evidence of people haven't inhabited the island, so rumor is a bunch of wizards or something had been living here and just making big beasties until their creations turned on them. But that's just speculation. I met up with the knights briefly, asked them for directions to this place, but they introduced me to a friend of theirs who was also visiting from another dimension, and she was real insistent on joining me after we met. Oh please, you know it is much more entertaining adventure with a beautiful woman such as myself along with you, Bastard. Oh, jeez, you're awake? I thought you'd gone to bed. I had, but the beds you have on this ship are too soft for me. Would rather sleep on the floor, frankly. I mean, that is an option. You can go for it. But also, I get it. I, I got mushy beds for the guest rooms because I thought other people would want it, but my own bed is pretty sturdy. Never liked feeling like I was melting into something. Well, perhaps I should just join you in your bed then, hmm? Yeah, not an offer I was making. Now, not to be rude, but I I'm trying to log this little outing of ours. Well, I shall join you then, and ensure that you are telling the tale correctly. Could be good bonding opportunity for us as well? Uh, sure, fine. Ship, this'll be a dual log recording. Mark down a second voice as Vasilia Kuzit. That is Kuznet. You should remember it could be your last name someday. Uh, Kuznets never change our last name, regardless of gender. The name carries too much weight to be dropped. Yeah, not something I need to worry about, but whatever. Uh, Kuznet. Got it, ship? A note has been made, Bustar. Please carry on with the recording. Thanks. Anyway, so when we got to the island, we were looking for a place to land, and even though ship was cloaked, we still got attacked. I think the first chimera we came across could sense different electrical surges or something, because it seemed to be this big ball of fur and lightning itself. We sped up our descent so we could land quick, hop out of ship, and try to incapacitate the big beautiful beastie. But Hack and Slash Sally here nearly killed it on us. I still do not understand why you did not let me slay the beast. It challenged us by attacking, and its hide could have made incredible armor. Plus all those teeth from its three different heads. Oh, so many electrically charged blades I could have made. Yeah, but it was also an adorable living creature just defending its home. Adorable. It doesn't deserve to be hacked to pieces just for living its life. Did you not already say that these creatures may have been made by wizards or sorcerers or such anyway? May not even technically be alive. But who is alive is my clients who would love armor and clothing from such a creature. Aim for me to decide if something is technically alive or not. Besides, if anything, I would have wanted to make this thing my pet, not kill it. 
But it was too vicious for something like that anyway. Even though we had our disagreements about what to do with it, it was actually pretty fun to fight. It conducted electricity from the air through its wings, then would spit it out from a mouth on its tail that kind of looked like this cute little leech or eel or something. Cute? Perhaps the large kitty cat head was somewhat cute, but the leech tail? Leeches are a lot cuter than people give them credit for. Anyway, I brought my favorite weapon, my pyrogalve, and used it as a lightning rod. The thing tried to shock me, but I just absorbed the juice into my staff. Normally, with a lightning sort of creature, getting it doused in water is a good way to try taking it down, but with this thing having an aquatic looking tail, I figured that wasn't gonna work. Stabbing it would have worked. Quite effectively, I might add. I got a few slices in before you stopped me. Yeah, and I still ain't thrilled about you getting those slices in either. Anyway, we played a bit of cat and mouse, or cats and mouse, with the thing for a while, trying to figure out how to get it off our backs. And what ended up working was getting onto its back. I saw that it pretty constantly had lightning shooting between its wings, so I leapt onto its back and started absorbing that lightning into my staff. Don't know exactly why, but it really didn't seem to like that. It started kicking up real fierce, trying to shake me off, but I held tight to its fur. It did also try biting you with definitely not cute leech tail, but I stopped it. Without stabbing it, I might add, which took much unnecessary restraint. Could have turned leech skin into beautiful fish leather armor. Hey, you're joining me on my travels, so you follow my rules. But I do appreciate you holding off a tail for me. As you should, and I know where you could repay me. You're something else. Anyway, I don't have a solid log on all the monsters of this world, because I'm pretty sure I brought the only computer here with me, but pretty sure at least one of the critters mixed into that electric chimera is considered basically a legend. The thing's wings seemed real similar to an insanely rare thunderbird that's been spotted only a few times in the last century near the Pallet Grove Hills. Not an area I've been to, but sounds like a pretty cool place to visit. Anyway, that was just the first chimera we came across. We'd landed down near the shores, and when we wandered over to the beach, it wasn't long before another leapt right up out of the water to greet us. Only at that point, my travel buddy here wasn't in armor and ready to fight anymore. What? You said beach, so I got in beach attire, meaning very flattering bathing suit. Not that anything is ever not flattering on me. But regardless, a Kuznet is always ready to fight, no matter what we're wearing. Just because we make armor does not mean we need armor to be formidable. This next chimera that sprung up was even more wild looking than the first one. It had three heads splitting out from its shoulders, and all three were pretty different looking. It had giant blue fins with red markings on them that definitely didn't seem like they were big enough to let this thing fly. But sure enough, it went out of the water right into the sky, then came at us. I still had my pyrogalve, and Kuznet was unarmed. What did I need to be armed for anyhow? You said you wanted to keep creature around for a while anyway. That is true, I was hoping to play around with the big guy for a bit, wanted to see what it could do, but... It seemed a lot more interested in going after Kuznet than me. You see, most beings, both human and animal, cannot resist me. You really want as bragging rights that a chimera would be into you? It's not about what I want, it's simply about what is true. You know, you sound pretty arrogant a lot of the time. And you sound surprisingly similar to my ex-lover Heath. This is not insult, it's very masculine voice, which I find quite appealing. I'm just... Pushing along here, Kuznet started doing some admittedly pretty impressive acrobatics to avoid getting chomped on by this thing, but then it spat a beam of water out of two of its side heads and sent her flying into the trees. And gracefully striking feet against trunks, springing off and landing. Sure, I guess I'll have to take your word for that, I didn't see it, because I was more focused on how its middle head was charging up some kind of purple beam attack. I flipped around my pyrogalve and shot a burst of flame in front of its face. With my staff charged up with lightning from the first fight, I could have knocked this thing out cold with an electric shock. But didn't want it down and out just yet. Wanted to see what this purple beam could do. Just, you know, didn't want Kuznet getting hit with it. How very noble of you after you did not check to see if I was alright. Was busy, I would have gotten to that eventually. But once I got this thing's attention with my flame, it turned its middle head on me and fired some kind of pulse beam at me. I flipped backwards away from it, but it kept shooting and was gonna catch me with that blast, until... 
I heroically leapt in and tackled you out of the way, saving your life. And then almost got us both killed anyway, since you wouldn't get off of me fast enough. I will have you know that most men would very happily die with Vasilya Kuznet on top of So I chucked Vasilya into the air, out of the way of the beam, then I had to roll back away from it into the water. Drop my pyro galve as I did. So when the beam finally stopped, I leapt back out of the water towards it. Unfortunately, its other heads chimed in again and blasted my galve with another beam of water. Luckily, Kuznet caught the thing and finally let out the lightning charged up inside of it. I still don't get how you knew how to use a weapon like that when you ain't from a tech-savvy world. Kuznets have incredible intuition when it comes to weaponry, even shoddily built devices such as your uh, pyro galve. You know, I could construct you something much more useful. Don't eat it, but thanks anyway. The giant shock from the galve hit this thing right in the chest with a full dose of lightning pulled from the other chimera. And it was, surprisingly, not enough to knock the thing out. But it was enough to get it off and running away. Saw it dive back into the water a ways down the beach, and we ain't seen it again since. We called it a day after that, and now, here we are. Looking to go find some more tomorrow after a good long sleep in separate rooms. Oh, Bastar, when will you come to your senses and stop playing silly game of hard to get? I ain't playing hard to get, you're just, no offense, not my type. Oh please, I am everyone's type. Nobody can withstand Vasilya Kuznet's charms. Well, apparently that ain't true, cause here I am. Look, you wanna see my type? Here, my ex Savage definitely ain't got the best personality, cause none of them Yauja predators do. But here, ship, bring up image file 208 for Vasilya. Here is the requested file for Ms. Kuznet. Oh my goodness, this... Cannot be the right image. Uh, invisible ship person, you have shown the image of some hideous monster being. Nope, that's the pick I was thinking of. Ain't ever getting back with her, but I can't deny, in my opinion, Savage is one of the finest pieces of mandible any side of my universe. This is truly confusing situation for me. Rejected by someone who is attracted to this? Seriously, you come on to people this strong and fast and you ain't used to getting rejected? No, because everyone else I have ever met has the basic common sense to at least be jealous of me, or attracted to me, or even intimidated of how attracted to me they are. I don't get why you're into me anyway, we got nothing in common. You like killing critters to make clothes, and I'm all about leaving them be and helping them find a safe place to live. We'd never work anyway. Ugh, you are right. Perhaps I am simply seeking attention because I feel rejected by my previous lover Heath, and your voice... Reminds me of him. Oh, well, sorry, I, I get feeling bummed after something like that ends. I'm here to talk if you really need to. It it's not my strong suit, but still. Well, if talking is not your strong suit, you could comfort me in other ways. Oh, are you just... Kuznet, you're a ridiculous person. That is an odd way to pronounce ravishing. Ship, any chance we've got ejector seats on this vessel? We do not. That is not a feature that most spaceships have, as being launched into space is rarely desirable, but I can install some if you'd like. Might be a good idea if we're going to be spending more time with this one. As usual, the art from this episode will be made available as posters on the Popgrass Studios Teespring store. Both those posters will be linked in the description. I'd also love to know what other things people would like to see chimeras made out of, because admittedly on the near horizon I'm planning to focus more on original stories in my new series Vigilance and Multiverse Tales and maybe bring back Starseed Psyche, but I do think some more of this could be a lot of fun too. If you enjoyed this, you might like my Pokemon as Godzilla Monsters episodes or my Pokemon Dragons episodes, but also if you want to get prepared for Monday where I've got two more episodes of Vigilance coming out, if you haven't seen the first three episodes that I dropped earlier this week, you might want to check those out. I'll link the playlist in the cards. But besides that, that's all for today, except of course for ending this video on some kind of positive or inspiring note, and the thought I want to leave people with today is another quote from Dr. Leah Katz, who says, When you're dealing with stress, a great prompt to reflect on is what can I control about this situation, and what can I not control about this situation. Then focus on the things that you can control, which is empowering for you, and practice acceptance for the things that you can't. I hope that's inspiring. I love you all. I'll see you all in Monday's Vigilance episodes, which are chock full of lessons like that. Goodbye.